Hello, thank you for checking out my video today. Today, I want to talk about this book, 8088. So it took a couple weeks to get this here. Uh, I think these were designed this year or last year over in China. Um, it's basically a IBM PCXT clone, but as a laptop. Um, and it's pretty close to being uh, hardware accurate. Uh, Although it doesn't use the same parts. I'm going to post on my Discord page a picture of the motherboard. And you'll be able to see. So here is the basic case. It's uh, not super thick or anything. It's not like, I don't think it was 3D printed. But it was just molded out of this semi-transparent um, material. Um, it's got a couple of covers on it that open. Um, in here, basically your CGA card, sort of. You also have your clock, it looks like, and uh, your uh, bus controller. This does run in maximum mode. And then you also have an um, 8253 eight uh, here, system timer. Um, underneath the cover here, you can't see the chip, but the DMA controller there in 8237. And then you've just got some service-mounted memory here. And then your latches and stuff are kind of there. There's battery there. You've got, um, it looks like three chips, and they have little stickers on them. Uh, I peeled one off. There's nothing underneath the sticker for like a chip identifier. So I'm thinking they're an FPGA. One of them's the, it says like the IO, and the other two are uh, CGA type chips. So I'm thinking they used FPGAs to kind of make up some of the interface. Um, I'll just go down the side here real quick. It looks like you've got a, a headphone jack. The power button's recessed. I mean, I can't even power it on with my finger. I have to use a pencil. I don't know if there was a rubber stopper or something that went on there in the case. I didn't see in the box. Uh, you got your, your power terminal here and then an expansion port on the back. And this is an ISA expansion port, which goes to this here. With the expansion port, there's not much to talk about other than it's three ISA slots. The only thing I don't like is it doesn't really specify which way is forward or back. Um, I metered it, you know, if you meter between uh, the first uh, one and three pin here, if you get five volts, that's the, uh, would be the back of the card. The front of the card is your data and address bus. And I want to say this is the back of the card. I would definitely meter it again before I plugged another card in. You just don't want to fry the card or the the board. It is a little finicky. The whole product as a whole is a touch finicky. On the side here, well, speaking of the finicky, uh, sometimes you forget how finicky even the original 8088 was at times. Compact flash. I'm not going to pry it out. I think it's a 512 megabyte. It's got DOS 622 on there. I doubt it's licensed. <laughs> uh, USB. This is uh, CH375. Uh, very similar to the 376 that I use. It's the predecessor. So the 76 has uh, just a couple more features, but uh, additional features on the 76 I don't think we use anyway. So 75, that, and also it's not mapped to the same port that I use. I use port E0. These guys are probably using, uh, I, I have no idea. I have to look online. Inside, you've got two more little hatches that open. On this side, it's uh, the audio card. I uh, haven't really played with other than basic PC speaker audio so far. And on this side, you have a place for an 8087, your processor. This is a Dash uh, 10, so it's actually the first 10 megahertz 8088 processor I own. And then you have your BIOS here. It's a full 64K BIOS. I plugged in an 8087. Um, it just got really hot. I mean, it worked, and it tested as there, but the whole this whole area got super hot and I, I didn't like how much heat it was putting off. So I took it out. Um, let's go ahead and boot it up. Use that, that screwdriver to turn it on. Now, let's see here. Let's get this realigned. As you can see, the screen is not aligned correctly. And I've seen some pictures online. I'm not the only one with this problem. Because I have a USB plugged in, it's going to mount it as D. I'm sure with some uh, modification, we could get it to boot from that with no problem. 
So you can see it's mounting that SD. It's actually pretty good focus for most of my videos when I'm doing screens. Um, to fix the screen alignment, there's no buttons that I found on the case. Um, there's a function and then there's a little screen here. You push that and it flips the mode 80 and that, that actually fixed it. Sometimes, sometimes that doesn't fix it. And what I end up doing is doing mode 40. Oh, it's not wrong. And that takes it into a larger font and then like, uh, do like a DIR. It doesn't seem to go right back. Kind of like have to like run a little bit of program or whatever. And then you can do, um, mode 80 and it should go back in a line. Sometimes just flipping between the two, doing some clear screens and you can get it to line eventually. I don't know if it's a hardware glitch or a software glitch that's doing it. As you can see it's got area 5150 on there. And I tested it. It does work. And uh, from what I understand, if you can get Area 5150 to work, you've got a pretty good clone. Um, all right. So we're back to mode 80. Um, really, I mean, I can show you all the programs and everything, uh, but there's really no need to. Uh, it's, it's a basic uh, 4.77 megahertz PC. Now, when they advertise it, they put slash eight megahertz, and I haven't found a switch to go to eight megahertz. I don't know if there's a software command to go to eight megahertz. Looking at the motherboard, there's no crystals that would make eight megahertz. So I don't know if you could unsolder the crystal, but that may screw up more things than it's worth. You come into MSD, you can see it's running an 8088. It says it's got uh, four drives, uh, which it doesn't. Um, so it's about like my products where the drives are all screwed up. CGA and it is running a sort of CGA video, no network, MS DOS 622. This does have Windows on it. I'm not going to bother showing you. It just runs so slow. It'll take, well, take three minutes to in, get into it. And then you don't have a mouse anyway. Uh, we can look at the memory. That's about the only thing worth looking at in here. You can see the ROM is up at the top from F0 on up. Um, I did plug in that expansion cable. You can see there's a little bit of like, almost like CGA snow. <laughs> But uh, yeah, that expansion cable, I plugged in uh, my my own expansion uh, USB card. And it did find the ROM on the expansion cable, but it didn't initialize it. There were some problems. Anyway, so you can see there's V800 to C0 is full with some RAM. And that's pretty much it for the memory. Let's, uh, let's run check it. And then I'll just pretty much close out the video. It's on D colon. Now, with the, when the 8087 was plugged in, it definitely detected it. Um, no problem there. Um, I don't know if it's running a refresh cycle or not, or if it is, it's not using the DMA controller to do it. I kind of suspect it is, as slow as this is running. You know, the refresh cycle really takes up a lot of uh, processor time. It, well, it doesn't use the processor. It just puts a delay in there as it refreshes the DRAM. Um, but like I say, it's also running at 4.77 megahertz. So it's about as slow as I ever run any PC. This takes a bit to load. All right, we're getting closer. Check, it's gonna run the board. And then really what we want to test is the, we can do a main system for speed. Let's take a minute to run. Now, right here on these tests, when the math code processor was in there, this portion of the test went super fast. Like here, it's just going to step up slowly, but it was like fast. And then the mass speed was like clear out to here with that code processor in there. So you can see it's basically matching out to a uh, PCXT. Uh, let's go back to, we'll test the main board. And pretty much it kind of tests out like mine does, um, skips a bunch of crap and then test the DMA controller and the interrupt controller. I think it only has one interrupt controller. I, I don't think it has two, probably no reason to have two. 
I don't think I remember seeing an interrupt controller on the board, so it must be into that that FPGA type chip. And I only am assuming it's an FPGA. I, I can't say for sure. Interrupt controller always takes the longest to test. All right, pressing the key. Um, so you can see pass, pass, skipped. Uh, and DMA controller fell channel zero, just like my board does. So they're not using channel zero. Um, and interrupt controller pass. So anyway, um, I think it's uh, an okay product. Uh, if you're looking for something compact to take on the road, if you like playing on computers over the road. But it is a little finicky. Um, and I probably should have mentioned in the beginning, the BIOS, there's some controversy with the BIOS. They were thinking it was ripped off from Sergey's BIOS. And uh, I think the issue there was there was just no credit given. You can't find the BIOS on um, online anywhere. You can go to the web page. It's all in Chinese. I translated it over to English and really nothing new there. It's not really, there's nothing to download there at all. It just kind of, it's like a product advertisement page, basically. But yeah, there was just, if they did use Sergey's BIOS, I think there's just the concern. There was no reference for credit. Um <laughs> But anyway, uh, thanks for checking out my video today. If you have any questions, email me. Um, if you want a copy of the BIOS, I've downloaded or I've ripped it off the chip. So uh, maybe I'll post that available somewhere.